Climate change is damaging harvests and destroying the livelihoods of many people in Africa and worldwide. But ordinary German farmers will soon feel the effects of climate change as well. Hotter summers and severe storms could change the nutrient balance in the soil. So what can be done? Well, scientists at the Helmholtz Center for Environmental Research have set up 50 plots of land where they're simulating the effects of climate conditions five decades from now. They hope to predict the most dramatic effects of climate change so people can prepare for the worst. Let's take a look. It's harvest time. Various small patches of grass are mowed and the yield weighed. Then the researchers work out how high or low the yield is relative to the size of the plot. Here it's quite high. The plot is open to the sky. We haven't influenced it. What does that mean? We haven't watered it or protected it from the rain. It hasn't been covered at night to keep the temperature up. On other plots, the researchers do intervene to change the conditions. Here, when it gets cold or if it rains a lot, a roof slides into place. The aim is to simulate the climate as it might be half a century from now. The 50 test fields are planted and tended in all kinds of different ways to compare how climate impacts soil today and how it will impact soil in a few decades. For example, climate change is expected to bring droughts. When it's hot in summer and the temperature is right and the days are long and the plant is in the mood to grow, there won't be enough rain. There might be more rain in winter, spring and autumn, but that won't be of any use. The plant can't make use of it. Same with higher temperatures. In our latitudes, a plant can't grow in the winter if it's only light eight hours a day. One solution might be to plant different breeds or crops. There are some that stop growing when there is not enough rain and start again when there is. They're relatively resistant to drought, but they won't grow on just any kind of soil. Farmers will have to find ways to deal with climate change. Strategies will include selecting new breeds that will do better under future climate conditions than the ones currently in use. Or focusing more on those currently in use that are likely to continue to do well under future conditions. Many farmers say they are already noticing the impact of climate change. Robert Grubic grows wheat, millet, corn and barley. He says they are all being affected. I see soil damage due to dryness almost everywhere. The best soil can still deal with it. But where the soil is poorer, the leaves turn yellow and the plants start to die. This year, Grubic has planted Sudan grass, where he used to grow canola. It's native to eastern Africa and can withstand a lack of water. He says the yield will most probably be lower than that of his highly bred corn. At the Helmholtz Center, they're looking for other kinds of solutions as well. They say microorganisms in the soil, such as fungi and bacteria, will have an important role to play. They can be harnessed to help mitigate the effects of climate change. Soil contains an incredible repertoire of organisms, which react in different ways under different conditions. When it gets drier, certain species and classes of species become more prevalent and take over functions that other bacteria fulfill when conditions are wetter and without the use of pesticides. Organic farming already makes use of such techniques. Bacteria on the roots of clover bind nutrients and help feed the clover. 
Bacteria always play an essential role in soil. They're always involved in plant nutrition, especially with regard to nitrogen, either making it available or withholding it. That's why this class of bacteria is so important. After just three years of experiments, examination of crop and soil samples indicate that microorganisms may be the way to go. The staff collect and evaluate huge amounts of data. Climate change is extremely complex. In order to understand it better, the research project is set to run for at least 20 years. The water hyacinth is a dangerous beauty adorning rivers and lakes. Originally native to the Amazon basin, it was introduced to many other places including East Africa. But soon it turned out to be a pest. It blocks waterways and creates an ideal habitat for mosquitoes. But in Kenya, a local businessman found a solution to the problem and turned the pest into a resource. So what kind of resource are we talking about when we talk about the hyacinth? Let's check it out. Water hyacinth continues to choke Lake Victoria, Africa's largest freshwater lake. About 30 million people rely on this source of water for their basic sustenance. The invasive plant species is affecting the livelihood of many people living around the lake. But some farmers are turning the problem into a valuable resource. Hyacinth in the lake, to the, to the fishermen, it is a bad omen. To us, it is a blessing in, in these guys. The lake men are in bad condition because they cannot go and fish in the lake right by, by then. But uh, we also help them because while removing it, they, fi they find a space to work on. Now they can go to the, to the lake and fish. Charles Oyango and the farmers are harvesting their green gold they produce compost from freshwater hyacinth, soil and ash. In nine weeks, this will be a high quality fertilizer. There is three nutrients needed in the soils and the hyacinths provide all of them. That is nitrogen, potassium and the phosphorus. And those are the key, key manures needed in the soil. So that's why we took the hyacinths from the lake to go and make the compost. Charles Oyango gave up fishing to become a full-time farmer. <laughs> His success is also due to Alex Omino. The conservationists taught Charles and other farmers how to produce the hyacinth fertilizer. The organic manure, the water hyacinth manure, is soil friendly. It is friendly to the living microorganisms. They don't kill any microorganism. And it is the microorganism that will always decompose and aerate the soil to make sure there is good growth of the plants. When water hyacinth decomposes under the water's surface, it allows poisonous gases to accumulate and deprives the water of oxygen. That kills the fish, and it has a harmful effect on water quality. The water becomes unsafe for human consumption. Margaret Odala also heard about the new fertilizer made from water hyacinths. She decided to give it a try and found that her harvest doubled. It has changed my fertility in the soil, my soil. By the time I started digging my little home I have, the crops were not healthy. But now by using manure, the crops look healthy and fresh. And uh, the results or the income I get is different from the first time I started digging. Her customers come to her farm and buy vegetables from her directly because they know her products are fresh and healthy. Margaret Odala doesn't use chemical fertilizers on her crops. The hyacinth based fertilizer isn't just organic, it also retains water much better than ordinary chemical ones. The chemical manure has a scorching effect. If there is no rain, then you see the plants start to wither. But when you compare with the 
the organic, you will see even if the rain delays, they will like to prolong their life. So far, 45 farmers are using the hyacinth fertilizer. Alex Omino hopes to soon convince all 1,000 farmers in the region to switch to the organic manure. Well, we wish we could have more time to give you more interesting environmental stories, but unfortunately, we're out of time. Do care to join us again next week, but in case you have any views, comments on the show, you know how to reach us, visit our websites. My name is Joy Doreen Bira from Nairobi, Kenya. Until next time, bye-bye. You can find out more about our stories on our website or visit us on our social media platforms and have your say. Thanks for watching. We'll be with you next week for another edition of our Pan-African and European Environment magazine. Bye-bye from Abuja, Nigeria.